Good morning. Let me get my mic on. All right, there we go. Good morning. Nope. Oh, every Sunday. Okay, here we are. Welcome to Faith. I'd like to welcome members and visitors, virtual and in person. Here at Faith, we welcome people. We welcome all people, no matter their race, culture, economic status, ability, age, sexual orientation, gender identity, or gender expression. All are invited to participate fully in the life of faith because we are all one in Jesus Christ. I'm so glad you all are here today. Thank you for joining us for worship. Thank you for wearing your masks. Um, today we're going to sing one verse only, just like last week. And last week I wanted to read you a little bit from um, Pastor or Bishop Bill Guffian's uh, letter that he sent out about the pandemic, um, and I forgot to, so this week I'm going to read it. So this is just a section. This is a pastoral message from Bishop Bill Guffian to the people and communities of the Indiana Kentucky Synod, August 5, 2021. If you have not been vaccinated and are able to be vaccinated, please get those shots in the arm as soon as possible, he says. If you have friends or family members who have not been vaccinated, please encourage them to do so and do whatever you can to help them do it. Despite what some are trying to make of it, vaccination is not a political issue. It's a matter of human health and the common good. If you are concerned that getting vaccinated is somehow a violation of your personal rights or freedom, consider the counsel of scripture. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit, against, submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters, siblings. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That's Galatians 5, 1 and 13 to 14. We, the Synod, strongly recommended that current CDC guidelines be followed in all in-person gatherings of the body of Christ, including worship. Faith communities should continue or re-implement the wearing of face coverings and physical distancing for all present for indoor gatherings and to limit high-risk activities like corporate singing and speaking and some communion practices. So that's just a section from the letter. You can find it on the website. Um, but I wanted to share, this is our bishop who is asking us to do this, um, as well as each other. Today we will be doing communion, so for those of you joining us virtually, if you don't have your elements, go ahead and grab them now. And let us take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. You may stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we are captive, captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. ourselves. We, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the, For the sake, sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have, have mercy on us. us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Ever-loving God, your Son gives himself as living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such a knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. All right. Time for the children's message. Maya, your hair is different today. Or no, it's not. Is it different today? It's down. It's cute. All right. So today we're going to do the same word we did last week, and that is love. Do you remember it? Yeah, love. Good job. Um, so today I want to talk about friendship bread. I feel like this is a nearly perfect metaphor for how God's love works, but I hope I can explain it simply enough for you to understand. So first of all, bread is made from dough, kind of like Play-Doh, but with different ingredients. You mix flour and water and other ingredients together to make the dough, and it's squishy, like I said, like Play-Doh or clay. Then you put it in a pan and bake it, and it turns into bread. So friendship bread is a special type of bread that is made and passed along to other people so they can make it too. So to start making the bread, you have to first get some of the dough from someone else. They share it with you. So once you receive that small starter ball of dough, then you add more ingredients to it to make, a bigger piece, to make it a bigger piece of dough. Then you divide it into four sections. You give three sections away to other people. And you bake your loaf of bread with the fourth section, the last section. So the three pieces you give away means that three other people can make this friendship bread because they now have the starter ball of dough, right? And the fourth part is what you get to keep. And you bake it and you eat it as bread. So if you want to make this bread, you first need to get some of the dough from someone. And then at the end, you take some of your dough and you give it to someone else. And they make it and give it to someone else. And that person makes it and gives it to someone else. And it goes on and on. And this is just like how God loves us. First, God loved us. And because God loves us, we can love other people. God gives us love, and then we share that love with others. And they share that love with more people, and so on. We can love the world because God first loved us. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for yummy treats like friendship bread. Thank you for things that remind us of your love. And thank you for your love that you have given to us that we don't deserve, but that we can pass on to other people and share. Please help us to remember to share that love of yours with other people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has set out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second, the psalm will be read recently. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. The lions are in want and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you reverence for the Lord. Who among, among you, you takes, takes pleasure, pleasure in life and, and desires long life to, to enjoy, enjoy prosperity. prosperity? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying words. Turn from, from evil and do, and do good. good. Seek, Seek peace and, and pursue it. it. The second reading is from Ephesians 
chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times, and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the, of the world is my flesh. The Jewish opposition then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is, is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and and I live because of the Father. So whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So here we are in another week of John 6's Bread of Life Discourse. I feel like I'm almost out of things to say about the Bread of Life at this point, but then again, maybe that's the point. I was thinking this week about how we just go with the flow so often and with so many things and about how we can miss a lot, even when we're paying attention, if we don't stop a minute and spend some time in one place. I've been thinking of the benefit of being stuck in one place, so that you're able to start to notice the little details around you, instead of just the big things you're familiar with. And I'm willing to bet that, I'm willing to bet that this was exactly what the lectionary developers had intended. For me, it makes sense to spend a chunk of Mark's lectionary year in John, seeing as Mark is the shortest gospel. It leaves us time and space to dive into John and to get to know him and his writings. So I'm all for giving John some time in the Mark lectionary year. But John has 21 chapters in it. Why spend all of this time just in chapter 6? Why not do a broader study of John throughout a five or six week period instead of just staying in one chapter? I think maybe it's because the lectionary writers knew that John chapter 6 was an important piece of John's theology and John's message. I think they might have decided that to know John 6 well is to know John. I think that chapter 6 must be the most important bit of the book. And if this is true, then it makes sense for us to take a deep dive into it instead of just reading bits of the entire book once every three years. So let's take a look at where we are this week. Jesus has taken the whole bread of life thing one step further in this week's reading. Whereas in previous week's readings, Jesus spoke of the bread of life, now he speaks of the living bread, the bread that is alive. 
He tells his people to eat his flesh and to drink his blood. He's taken what was a metaphor and he's brought it to Eucharistic realism in a very explicit way. And even though we're familiar with this language as Christians, it still might sound a little strange to us. It makes us a little uncomfortable. But don't worry, it did the same thing to the listeners in Jesus' time. At this point, actually, is where some of his followers leave him. And can you blame them? Think of how things are these days with conspiracy theories and misinformation running rampant and all the unknowns that exist outside of any particular group or community. Those unknowns can seem like secrets, and people can run miles with a secret, developing intricate theories about what's going on. The, the misinformation skews the truth of things. Conspiracy theories run wild. Think of what all that does in today's society, even where we have science and math and video documentation to give us solid definition to things. Imagine how much more confusing the unknown would be back in Jesus' day without all the knowledge we have today. So many things were attributed to unnatural or supernatural causes. There were so many mysteries that people tried to explain in various different ways. There was so much less knowledge and scientific truth to help them handle something peculiar. And here this man is talking about eating his flesh and drinking his blood, and he's not speaking metaphorically anymore. Is he talking about cannibalism? The whole idea just doesn't sit right somehow. I can imagine myself back then saying, what is up with these Jesus followers? They are really weirding me out. As a matter of fact, some of the earliest criticisms of what would become known as Christianity circled around this idea. It was the misinformation and the misinterpretation or misunderstanding of things like this that turned some of the early people off from following Jesus. People thought that, behind closed doors, these Christ followers were literally eating human bodies. And that's disturbing. This language of eating flesh and blood is disturbing. But I think that was actually intentional on Jesus' part. Jesus is describing a radical connection between him and his followers. A connection where they are eating his own flesh and drinking his own blood. A connection where they are literally putting Jesus inside of themselves, inside their bodies, allowing Jesus to physically abide within them. It's a crazy, radical, unheard of idea because it describes a crazy, radical, unheard of relationship between God and God's people. This is a relationship that has never existed in this way before. This is a relationship that cannot be found anywhere else but between a human and God. This is like no other relationship with no other God in existence. So Jesus needed a crazy, radical, unheard of way of speaking about it. The living bread harkens back to the story of the living water Jesus gave to the woman at the well in chapter 4. Jesus asks the woman for water. The woman questions him for asking her, a woman of Samaria, for a drink. And Jesus answers her, If you knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Everyone who drinks of this water, referring to the water from the well, will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. This is the water that continually reminds us of our baptism into the Holy Spirit. I think I've talked to you before about how you can incorporate everyday actions into remembrances of baptism. For example, when you take a shower, you can retrace, retrace the sign of the cross on your forehead that was marked there so long ago. When you put on your cold cream at night, dab it in the sign of a cross. When you walk into some sanctuaries, they have the baptismal font open and filled on a regular basis so you can dip your fingers and mark yourself with the sign of the cross. 
You can do this when it rains, when you're in a car wash, when you wash your hands. There are so many opportunities in each day where we can remind ourselves of this living water provided to us by God. And it is right for us to remember it because it is right for us to live into it. We are connected to God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit through this water. And because God loves us, we can love the world. We abide together, us and God, living together, doing life together. We are God's hands and feet in the world. We are given abundant life so that we might share abundantly with others. Verse 14 of Ephesians, the verse just before we picked up today's reading, says, Sleeper, arise. Rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. This is a wake-up call. The living bread is a wake-up call. It's an opportunity to restart, refresh and renewed, nourished and hydrated in God's love and Christ's presence, refilled with the Holy Spirit, and ready to reconcile relationships as well as to create new ones. God sets a table of sustaining nourishment for us, and through the bread of life, we are being invited to live intentionally. So don't be weirded out by the language Jesus is using here in these verses of John. Instead, let it remind you that it is unique language because it describes such a unique and gripping relationship between us and God. It describes a relationship of a God who loves us so much that God chose to be fully us in the incarnation, in the incarnation. It describes a relationship like no other relationship possible that is stronger, tighter, and deeper than anything we've ever known. It's a relationship that can never be severed, no matter what we do or say or think or believe. So I extend Jesus' invitation to you to come and eat of this bread and drink of this wine and participate fully in the life of Christ. Amen. join together in the creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. God of wisdom, enlighten your church. Guide theologians, biblical scholars, authors, and seminary professors as they seek greater knowledge and invite others into deeper understanding. Teach us to ask faithful questions and open our minds to new ideas. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, mend the earth. Cool, warming oceans and preserve melting ice caps. Increase our awareness of changing climate patterns and reveal how approaches to the ecological cha challenges we face. Shield those in the path of hurricanes or tropical storms. 
God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all nations, direct our leaders. Grant them courage to lay aside political grudges and renew their determination to address difficult conflicts. Guide them in the work of reconciliation. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. God of compassion, tend to the wounded. Rescue those tormented by mental illness or mired in in addiction. Ease the anxiety of those struggling with dementia. Come quickly to help all who are grieving and all those who suffer, especially Barb, Larry, Greta, Monica and her family, Sonia, Pat, Phil, Karen, Dorothy and Gordon, Patty, Fred, Jim, and all our family and friends listed in our prayer concerns. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of beauty, inspire artists. Bless those whose visual and musical gifts enliven this assembly. Bless the creative work of poets, hymn writers, composers, painters, sculptors, and others that enrich our worship and daily life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of glory, we praise you with those celebrating significant milestones in their lives, especially for Jim and Barbara Reif, Phil and Linda Helm with anniversaries this week. For the people in this place and for other needs in our community, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of resurrection, bring us to new life. Give us the living bread from heaven through which we abide in your love. And on the last day, raise us with all the saints to eternal life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another from our pews. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. with you but also with you lift up your hearts we lift them to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right to give our thanks and praise it is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn.
which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. You may be seated.
we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right. Um, announcements. So, council meets tonight, today, today after church, this afternoon, um, is one thing. Another thing is I will be on vacation this week, so I will be gone. Um, you can direct, I mean, I'll still have my phone and my email, um, but you can also contact the main office if you need anything. Um, because of the COVID um, numbers again um, rising, I haven't done as many visits, so if you're planning on a visit, it's probably not going to happen soon. If you need a visit, though, let me know. Um, we'll work it out. Um, did Miss Maya bring a certificate today? No? Okay. All right. I want to do this thing where I celebrate the, the milestones that the kids in our church do, and I know we don't have that many kids, but... Um, so, if any of y'all have kids, or on the interwebs, kiddos, um, if you get a good grade, if you get um, an award at um, sports, or piano playing, or whatever it is, any celebration, um, I want to share it with the church. Um, so, bring them, if you want, if you want. Um, are there any other announcements? I don't have the announcement sheet today, so I don't really know what's... No? No? Okay. All right. Well, we will continue. You may rise as you are able. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.